friends, it's Rana and today we have a little bit of a different setup. I hope you like it. Anyway, I have always been curious about what are the most popular books in the world, what are the most read books in the world, because I really want to know what are really popular books outside of booktube, because some books are really popular on booktubes and bookstagram, but in real life a lot of people don't really know about them. So I'm always interested to know what are the most popular books in the world, not just on booktube. So I came up with this idea to check out what are the most popular books in the world. So on Goodreads, we have a section called lists where there are different type of lists. Each list has different theme and people can vote on these lists. We have lists with the most popular YA books, books with the best plot twists and books about sparkling vampires. Perhaps one of my most favorite lists to follow on Goodreads is this list called books with over 1 million ratings, i.e. the most read books on Goodreads. Currently there are 100 books on this list I believe which is the perfect number and I'm here today to find out how many of these 100 books have I read, how many of them I am interested in and are on my TBR and which books you will never ever catch me reading. These 100 books are all over 1 million ratings, as I said, but they aren't ranked according to the most read to the least read. They are ranked according to how many votes they got on this list, so according to their popularity. The first book we have on this list, coincidentally, is the most read and the most popular on this list, and with no surprise, it is Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone by J.K. Rowling. It has over 8.5 million ratings on Goodreads, I read it, give it 5 stars, and there is not much to talk about it. This whole series, uh, last time I read it was 2 years ago. I was planning to reread it this year, but I don't know if it's going to happen, we'll see. But for now, it is 5 stars from me. The second book we have is The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins, the first book in the Hunger Games series. I obviously read and loved this book. I read it, I think, twice. I loved it, loved the movie. It is one of my favorite book to movie adaptation. It will always remain one of my favorites. Third, we have the first classic on this list. There are many on this list, but our first modern classic is To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. I love this classic. There are few books that are considered classics that I enjoyed, and perhaps because it is more modern and closer to our times. Then we have The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. I also read this book, give it four stars. It was quite enjoyable, but I prefer the movies over the book. They are more entertaining to me and I have a lot of memories attached to them. That's why I prefer and church the movies more than the book. As you can see, most of the books at the top of this list I already read, but there are many more that I didn't, so wait for it. Now we have Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. I give this one five stars, my favorite in the series. Then we have Goblet of Fire, five stars. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, four stars. All of them need, really, really need a reread because I think my opinion around them changed. Fluffy, Fluffy, wanna say hi? She's always angry when I carry her. Say hi. So let's get back to our list. We have another classic, 1984 by George Orwell. It is not my favorite. I give it three stars. It was really boring and dark for me, but I understand why it is very popular and why so many people adore this book and consider it one of their favorites, but it is not mine. Then we have a really, really unpopular opinion is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. It's been a while since I read this book. I gave it 2 out of 5 stars. I didn't really enjoy it that much. And I think the reason is because the language was too hard for me. At the time I read it, my English wasn't as good as now. And I struggled to through it. And to be honest, I'm not that big fan of drama and romance in books. That's why I didn't really enjoy it. Another two Harry Potter books, The Chamber of Secrets and The Order of Phoenix, both I give four stars. The Order of the Phoenix is my least favorite in this list, in this series, and it is probably more of a three stars, but 
Let's keep it at four stars for now. Animal Farm by George Orwell. I give this one four out of five stars. It is way better than 1984 and I loved studying it in my novel class in university. It was very enjoyable and I really loved my professor and the way she taught us this novel and discussed it with us. Another Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. I give this one another four stars. Honestly, the first four books in the series are my favorite. The remaining three aren't that good for me. Then we have The Fellowship of the Ring, The Lord of the Rings 1 by J.R.R. Tolkien. I DNF this book. I give it three out of five stars as a DNF. I didn't like it because I read like 50 pages and most of it was like rambling and singing long songs and it is mostly was description of nature and I'm not about all of that and the book was too long for me to be patient with it so I DNF'd it. I haven't watched even the movies yet. One day, one day I will watch them. I don't know when but I will. Then we have the second book in the Hunger Games series, The Catching, Catching Fire by Suzanne Collins. I give it four stars. Not as good as the first book, but it's still good. Then we have The Great Catsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald, another classic that I really enjoyed in university. And that ending really broke my heart. I wasn't expecting it. It was so sudden. But that's why I really enjoyed it, because of that ending. It was out of nowhere. And I enjoyed that. Then we have The Lion, The Witch and The Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis. I read the series for the first time last year. I think I read the, four, the first four books in it and stopped reading them. The first one is my favorite. I gave it four out of star five stars and I didn't complete the series because it became repetitive and it is too young for me to enjoy. But the first one really really loved it and gave it four stars. Then we have The Diary of a Young Girl by Anne Frank. Another really unpopular opinion that I will receive a lot of hate for. I read this book in 2020 as an audiobook and I give it 2 out of 5 stars. The reason remains the same. I wrote it in my review and let me tell you why. I was expecting a masterpiece, a heartbreaking masterpiece, but all I got is a boring diary of a young girl who hates her mother and going through puberty and she thinks she is the smartest girl in the world. Do I think that her end was very sad? Yes. Do I think this book is overhyped? Yes. The reason is, I am not attacking Anna Frank herself. She is a good girl and this book, I'm rating this book, not her life or anything happened to her. This diary, I don't think it is that good. It was really mediocre and I don't know what the hype is all about it. Maybe because of her, what happened to her at the end with her family. But as a book itself, I didn't really like it. Then we have Lord of the Flies by William Golding. This book is one of the darkest classics I read and I didn't really enjoy it. I don't like really dark books that talks about the human nature. I didn't really enjoy it. I know the message is great, but it was too dark for my taste. Then we have the third book in the Hunger Games series, The Mockingjay by Suzanne Collins, my least favorite in the series. I give it three out of five stars. Then we have the book or the novel that got me into reading fiction, The Da Vinci Code by Dan Brown. I read it long time ago and reread it long time ago. Loved it each time and gave it five stars. I really plan to reread all of Dan Brown books and make a video about them, talking about them and how I feel about them all after all these years. But for now, Dan Brown has a really special place in my heart because he got me into reading novels and fiction. So the five stars will remain there. At number 22, The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. My most hated classic ever. Because of this book, I discovered that I really, really hate reading the stream of consciousness books. They aren't what I enjoy reading. I hate reading what people think all of the time. That's why I hated this book because it was from the point of view of an uh, annoying teenage boy. <laughs> Not my cup of tea. Then at 23, finally a book that I haven't read, A Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin. I never been interested in A Game of Thrones. Not the book series, not the TV show. I never been really interested, never read anything about it. I just heard some 
opinions about the TV show and how terrible the finale was. I'm not really interested in the series because it is not completed. It started the year I was born. The first book was published in the year I was born. I think it was 1996. Yeah, and it is still not completed. I'm not really interested in a very long series with very long books with many, many, many characters that get killed every two pages. Not really what I look for in books, but it is really popular and my best friend really love the TV show and the book series. So maybe one day if it get completed, I may try the first book. But for now, no. Then we have The Kite Runner by Khalid Husseini. One of my all-time favorite authors. I love this man, love his books, and this one I give 5 out of 5 stars. Then we have a mystery thriller, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Never been interested in this one, and I will never read it ever. At the 26th place, we have the first Johnny Green book, The Fault in Our Stars. It won't be the last book on this list by Johnny Green. This book I read, didn't really enjoy. I gave it 3 out of 5, five stars. Not my jam really why a romance books with drama and death not really what i enjoy in reading books then we have divergent by verona Karoff, another popular dystopian book i never read it will never read it i one day back i think when the third movie came out i watched the first movie one day the following day i watched the second movie online then the third day we went to the cinema and watched the third movie and I think what I saw is enough. I don't, I'm not really interested in the story to the point to read the books. I just watch the movies for the sake of entertainment. Then we have The Lightning Thief by Rick Riordan, the first book in the Percy Jackson series. This book is the start of my Greek mythology obsession. I never read Percy Jackson or Harry Potter when I was young. I never read foreign books when I was young. English books are foreign to me. So... I read them when I was in university, when I started reading novels in English, and this one, The Lightning Thief, really made me obsessed with the Greek mythology at the age of 21. I read it in 2017, really loved it at that time. I gave it 4 out of 5 stars, I think it was a really good book. Then we have Twilight by Stephanie Meyer. I am Really proud to say that I never watched the movies, never read the books. When I was in high school, the movies were really big. Everyone were going to the movies in groups from our class to watch it. And I was the only one not really interested in watching them. Sparkling vampires on screen. They didn't watch it, never read it, and never will. Then we have The Book Thief by Marcus Zusek. I love this book. I gave it five stars and I actually watched the movies before reading the book, but I love them equally. They are both good in their own way. Then we have Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, a classic that I actually liked and gave it four out of five stars. Then we have another classic Fahrenheit 451. I don't know why it isn't marked as red because I read it. There is like a glitch. Oh yeah, I read it back in 2017. I give it four stars. It was pretty good. Then we have a William Shakespeare play, Romeo and Juliet. I actually never read this one. I am, I carry a degree in English literature and never read Romeo and Juliet. Yes, I know. I'm gonna read most of his plays one day. Not soon, but one day. Then we have Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. I read this one in the library of my university one day in one sitting give it three stars it was good not bad then we have a memoirs of geisha by arthur golden this one i give three stars the reason is because the first half of it i really loved and i would give five stars but the remaining wasn't that enjoyable for me so i give it in the end a middle rating of three stars next we have a favorite of mine the help by Catherine stockett this one I give 5 out of 5 stars. Love it. Love the movie. Love everything about it. Then we have Little Women by Louisa May Alcott, a classic that I read last year. It was very good. I give it 4 stars and the movie wasn't bad either. The Hitchhiker Guides to the Galaxy by Douglas Adam. I also read this one. I give it 3 stars. Another Dan Brown book, Angels and Demons, 5 stars. I love this one a lot. 
Then we have The Giver by Lewis Lowry, another book that I really love and gave it 5 stars. Then we have Brave New World. I didn't read this book. I'm not really a big fan of science fiction. I don't enjoy it that much. It rarely happens when I enjoy it. I can't remember any science fiction that I enjoyed. I don't read them that much, to be fair, but I don't really enjoy them. And I won't be interesting to read a classic science fiction, so I won't. I will never read this one. Then we have another one of my earliest novels that I read, The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho. I give it a three stars. It was decent. That Time Travels Wife, another book that I read, didn't really like it, give it three stars. It is more of two stars, to be honest, but let's leave it at three stars. Then we have a really beloved book, The Little Prince. I read this one in a one sitting, very fast. It didn't stick with me. I can't remember much of it. So I give it a three stars, but I think I need to reread it to give it a better and more fair rating. But for now, let's leave it at three. Then we have two thrillers, mysteries, I think. The Lovely Bones by Alice Sebold and Grand Girl by Gillian Flynn. For Lovely Bones, I'm not really interested. We'll never read it. Grand Girl, the movie was a spoil for me and the movie is based on this book. So I'm not really interested to read a book that was a spoil for me. Then we have another children classic, Charlotte's Web. I give this one three stars. And I do this one and The Little Prince. I read them when I was an adult, so that explains my rating. I know if I read them when I was younger, I would give them higher rating. But I read them when I'm adult and they are children books. I don't know how high of a rating am I am supposed to give them, I give them just three stars. Then we have City of Bones by Cassandra Clare, the first book in the Mortal Instruments series. I never read it, never will. I read The Infernal Devices by her and I hated that last book, something, Princess something. I really hate that book and that epilogue. So I'm not planning to read anything else by Cassandra Clare because most people say that The Infernal Devices are her best series. And if that's her best, I don't really need to read anything else by her. Then we have another YA series, Aragon by Christopher Paolini. Not really interested to read about dragons, so no, never read it, never will. The Golden Compass by Philip Pullman. I give this one three stars, it was okay. I loved the movie when I was younger and I didn't really find the book that good when I read it, it was okay. Then we have Eclipse, Breaking Dawn and New Moon all by Stephanie Meyer, the remaining books in the Twilight series. As I said, I will never read these books. You will never catch me reading them, not even over my dead body. Another book that I haven't read is Life of Pi. I didn't read it, will never read it. I watched the movie when it first came out in cinemas. It was a really beautifully made movie. But I don't think I need to read the book after watching it. Then we have Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky, another three star book from me. I give a lot of books three stars, so don't take it to heart. It doesn't mean anything. It just means that I didn't love the book and didn't hate it. It was an okay book for me. And it is another case where I prefer the movie or the, over the book. Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card, another science fiction book that I'm not interested in reading. The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, a classic that I didn't, I don't really care about. Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. This one, I really want to read it and it is on my TBR and the reason is, I enjoyed Jane Eyre by her sister and this one, my friends in uni took a class with a different professor than mine and they struggled with this novel. I don't know why, was it the professor fault? was it the novel's fault. I don't know. I'm just really interested to read what it is about. Well, then we have another mystery trailer, The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. This one, I'm not really interested in reading it. The Notebook by Nicholas Sparks. I read two pages and then it. I'm not really a big fan of romance books. And to even shock you even more, I never watched the movie. I think I might give the movie a chance, but the book never will do. Water for Elephants, another historical fiction romance that I'm not interested in. Then we have The Handsmaid Tale by Margaret Atwood. This one, I'm slightly interested in it because it is really popular and people really, really love it. Even the TV show received a lot of love 
and it has really good rate, average rating for how many people has read it. Have read it. It has four point twelve average rating with one point seven million ratings, so it is pretty high. And let's just add it to my TBR. I think one day I will get around to it. I'm interested in it enough to put it in my TBR. Then we have the curious incident of the dog in the night time. I heard many things about this book and. I don't know why it's not on my TBR shelf, so let's add it. Then we have Fifty Shades of Grey by E.L. James. Remember when I just said that I will never read Twilight and you will never catch me reading it not over my dead body? Well, there is a chance of me reading Twilight as a ghost and not reading Fifty Shades of Grey, ever. I will never read Fifty Shades of Grey. No, thank you. Where the Sidewalk Ends, Poems and Drawings by Shel Silverstein. I read it a while ago, I liked it, give it 4 stars. Eat, Pray, Love by Elizabeth Gilbert, not really interested, never saw the movie and will never read the book. Then we have Slaughterhouse 5, another science fiction book, I will not really interested in it. A Thousand Splendid Sons by Khalid Hussaini, one of my all time favorite books. I love this book as much as it breaks my heart remembering it. I give it 5 out of 5 stars, really really love it, always recommended for people when they say they want to read a sad book. If you are in the mood to really cry and get your heart broken several times throughout this novel, read it. You will thank me. Then we have The Shining by Stephen King. It is on my TBR. I have a really love-hate relationship with Stephen King. I really either hate his books or really really love them, there is no in between for me. And I think The Shining is an interesting book and it has an interesting premise, so I think I might like it. And it has quite a high rating too. Then we have Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I don't know why this book is not on my TBR either, but I really am interested in this one. I really would love to read this book because I have a feeling that I will really, really like it. So one day when I find a beautiful edition of it, I will buy it and read it. Then we have Where the Crow That Sing by Delia Owens. This one is on my TBR because of my friend the Dolphin Reader. He really, really loved this book and I became interested in it because of him. Insurgent, the second book in the Divergent series by Verena Karat. Didn't read it, will never read it. Then we have The Maze Runner by James Dashner. I watched all the movies except the last one because I forgot what happened in the previous one when it came out and I still didn't watch it and I'm not planning to rewatch all the movies just to see the ending. And the book, I'm not interested in reading the book, honestly. Most people said that the movies are way better than the books and when people agree on the statement that the movie is better than the book, I have to believe them. I won't read it. Dracula, another case where I'm really interested in this classic as much as Frankenstein. I really would love to read it one day. Then we have The Outsider by S.A. Hinton. I read this a while ago as an audiobook. I kept zoning out listening to the audiobook and I in the end didn't really enjoy it that much and gave it a really low rating on Goodreads. Last year I decided to clear the rating because I don't want to give false ratings to books when I can't remember a thing that happened in it because I kept zoning out, so I cleared the rating. Then we have Gone with the Wind by Margaret Mitchell, a historical romance. Do I have to say it? I will never read this one. I read Kill in Time, a book that I have never been interested in and will never be interested in. All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr, a historical fiction book that I enjoyed and I really really loved the cover of it. I gave 4 out of 5 star. It was a bit slow but a good one. Holds. This one I loved the movie when I watched when I was younger and never knew that it was based on a book till recently and I think I would really enjoy the book if I read it, so I'll put it on my TBR. Me Before You by Jojo Moyes. Never read the book, will never read the book. If uh, the curiosity got the best of me, I will end up watching the movie, but I won't read the book ever. Then we have Night. I read this book. I give it three stars. It wasn't bad. I didn't hate it, but it wasn't the best thing I ever read. The Secret Life of Peace. I don't know what this book is about. I just read the synopsis and it doesn't sound 
interesting to me, so no. Miss Peregrine Homes for Peculiar Children, the first book by Ransom Rates. I read this book, gave it a three stars, it was an okay book, hated the rest of the series. Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen, I wasn't a big fan of Pride and Prejudice and I'm not planning to read Sense and Sensibility. I might give it a chance for Jane Austen one day, but I don't think Sense and Sensibility will be the one to give a chance to. And then there were none by Agatha Christie, my first Agatha Christie. I really enjoyed it, gave it four out of five stars. It is a good book, a very good one. Another book by John Green, Looking for Alaska. I'm not really interested in any of his other books after reading The Fault in Our Stars. I'm not planning to read anything by him. My Sister's Keeper. I remember watching bits of the movie years ago, but I don't remember much of it. I remember the main idea of it, but I don't think it will be a book that I will enjoy reading, so I won't. Another classic on my TBR shelf, The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. This one I really need to read it this year because it is on my 22 books for 2022 and I have to get around to read it because I heard many great things about it. Educated by Tara Stover, a memoir. I love this one, one of my all-time favorite memoirs. Then we have Ready Player One by Ernst Klein. I read this book before it became a movie. It was a really good book. It was the first time I did anything like it and it was enjoyable. I gave it three stars. Then we have Dune by Frank Herbert. Again, a science fiction. And you know, I won't read it. Then we have another classic that I want to be reading, The Secret Garden. I grew up watching the anime version of it, The Secret Garden, with the girl with the big curly blonde hair. It was a really big part of my childhood and I really love it and it was everything for me when I was young. But I don't think I will enjoy reading the book. Then we have Eleanor and Park by Rainpour Raoul, a YA author that I actually enjoyed reading back then. But it, she is now kind of cancelled on booktube for some reason because people seem to think that her books are a bit racist. I remember, I don't remember it being that way, but who am I to judge? Then we have The Giving Tree. I read this book, love it. It is everything. I really, really love it. Then we have a YA series that was very popular back in the day, The Selection by Kira Cass. If you know me, you know, I won't, I'm not interested in these type of books, YA, romance. The Glass Castle by Janet Wools, another memoir that, yes, I read and gave four stars. I actually have her second book here, Half Broke Horses. I will read it soon. Another John Green, Paper Towns. No, I'm not gonna read it. Then we have It Ends With Us by Queen Hoover. This woman has the reading community on a chokehold. She is so damn popular everywhere, on re in real life, in... Booktube, Bookstagram, Booktalk. I don't use TikTok, but I hear that a lot of people talk about her there. I'm not interested in romance books, and I hear that most of her books are really problematic. But this one is so popular, and it is very high rated. Even people who hate her other books, they say that this book is really good. So maybe for a future video, I might try to read it. But for now, I won't be adding it to my TBR because the chance of me not reading it is higher than the chance of me reading it. Then we have The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. If you watch my videos on this channel, you know my opinion about Taylor Jenkins Reid and her books. I don't like them. I hate most of them. I give this one two stars. It wasn't as bad as her other books. I will stop talking about her on my channel because I talked enough about her so far. Then we have book number 100, The Silent Patient. Another thriller. It was spoiled for me. Someone ex accidentally spoiled it for me and I still remember the spoiler so I won't read it. I thought that there are 100 books only on this list but it seems like a recent one has been added, 101, and it is Steve Jobs by Walter Isaacson. Not really interested. I really like reading memoirs, but I'm not really interested in Steve Jobs. So no, I'm not gonna read it. I just did my calculations and counted everything from this list. My numbers may be off, but the real numbers, the correct numbers, gonna be here on the screen. What I counted right now, I read 52 books from the one 101. Nine are on my TBR, 
38 books I haven't read and will never read. So these were the most read books in the world according to Goodreads as of June 2022. I'm gonna leave a link to this list in the description box for you to go and check how many of them did you read. Please tell me in the comments how many of them did you read because I would love to know it. And that's it for today's video. I hope you liked it. Please subscribe to see my future videos and I'll see you next time. Bye!